I am blown away at how absolutely gorgeous Jellyfish Can't Swim at Night is. And not only is it gorgeous, but additionally, the story itself and the character interactions are just nailing it. It's so rare to actually have a series that pulls off not only character interactions, but also all the social anxieties and ideas and aspirations for the future that one child might have as they're getting to that age where their future is kind of present. But not only that, but mixing in a very topical subject these days, which is sort of all the pressures that come to a child when it comes to social media and going viral and the desire to be something. But I watched the first two episodes of this Dogokobo original, so let's just jump right into it. Jellyfish Can't Swim at Night opens up with a girl named Mahiro, and when she was younger, she was really into art. She even got her art chosen to be drawn on a wall. She really loved it, but unfortunately, when she brought her friends to go look at it, they immediately started criticizing it. They didn't know that it was hers, so she pretty much gave up art at that moment. We'll cut forward, and Mahiro's walking around the city, and then she noticed that her wall that she had drawn is covered and plastered with all these posters, and this lady, this street-side idol, is trying to sing in front of it and it kind of upsets her, but she doesn't speak up. Well, thankfully, somebody does speak up, this girl named Kano. She doesn't like the fact that somebody has covered up this art that she likes so much, and then she goes to leave. Well, Mahiro, hearing this, rushes to go follow her, ends up running into her, and thanks her for the fact that she actually likes her art. Well, Kano is an absolute fan of Mahiro's art, and so happens, she's also an artist. She's a vocalist. We end up finding out that Kano is a past idol who got caught up in a controversy, and she decided to kind of change her appearance and become an anonymous singer in order to seek out her dreams of being an idol, just to stick it to all the people that were haters. Well, she really quickly wants Mahiro to become her artist, her, to draw her icons and everything like that. But Mahiro is very reluctant at first because she just doesn't believe that she's special anymore. Well, after dwelling on this, Mahiro eventually runs into Kano again, and after Kano kind of takes over her wall and does a performance in front of it, it kind of inspires her to just take the leap, try this out, and actually become her artist. In the next episode, we have Mahiro and Kano is trying to work on their big debut, but they need patrons, they need equipment. <laughs> and just out of nowhere comes in Kim, who is a massive, massive fan of who Kano used to be, Tachibana. And she wants to become her patron, but wants Tachibana to come back. So it kind of turns this whole thing where Kano doesn't want to be her old self. She wants to be this new self, this new singer as Jelly. It gets a little bit into Kim and what she kind of experienced and how she was bullied and how Tachibana kind of brought her out of that darkness, inspired her to become a musician, and eventually, yes, became a composer that could actually help Kano and Mahiru with their new project. And that's basically a nutshell of the show, which is not even scratching the surface of the series. And it's one of those kind of difficult things in actually doing a review for a series like this is there is so much interpersonal relationships and characters and all of the difficulties they're going through. Let's start off with Mahiru. <laughs> I love how this series kind of opens up with, yes, Mahiru waking up to her sister, taking a video of her. There's so much emphasis in this early moment of sort of those difficulties that people and especially children right now are kind of facing with social media and networking, all that kind of stuff. This desire to just give up schooling altogether because if you go viral, you can make plenty of money that way. It is sort of something that a lot of children right now are facing, that desire to become a influencer rather than actually going and get a standard job. And yes, even having Mahiro at some point kind of pushing on her sister, you want to be careful with that because if you don't, if it doesn't make it out and you go to have a regular job, you'll end up like that one lady who had her entire picture put on this refrigerator. It's like this ongoing joke about this idea of those that try to succeed at something but end up becoming normal and then having those past desires and a being viral sort of come back to haunt them. It's kind of this present thing that's throughout the entire thing. Not only the idea of social media and the idea of going viral, but additionally the idea of the haves and has nots. Yes, Mahiro is very much so kind of bogged down early on by the idea that she was never special. She tried to be special. She was chosen back here. But it's not something that she herself can choose. She can't just go out there and be this big person that's going to be successful. And so she gave up on those dreams. Kano is the opposite of that. Kano is very much so bubbly. She wants to be out there. She used to be an idol. At some point, she apparently got in a fight with one of her group members, and that big scandal kind of took her out. Different than what Mahiro did, Kano decided at that point that she was going to become a new person. She made this anonymous self. And in this anonymous self, she became a new singer. She's doing all these performances online, all for the sake that she wants to be successful, no matter what the haters say. And additionally, the idea that because she's anonymous, those that hated her, that now like her new persona, it's almost like a big jab in their gut. And the idea that you still like me, you just didn't know it was me. So they're opposite here. 
The idea that Mahiro believes that Kano is special and that's why she's succeeding, but it's not really the case. It's that Kano did not let that keep her down. She made herself successful and now she wants Mahiro to do the same. So it kind of takes the two of them to sort of support each other till eventually we have that moment where yes, Mahiro decides, okay, I'll do it. Let's do this. <laughs> let's let's make this new band. In the second episode, a lot of it is about Kano sort of not wanting to accept that old self. Despite the fact that her biggest fan <laughs> shows up out of nowhere and wants her to become this old self, she won't accept it. She's like, that's not me anymore. That's my old self. I'm not going back to that. And again, yes, introducing Kim, who is pretty much inspired by Kano, which technically Kano was inspired by Mahiru. So it does get in that idea of people feeling like they're not special, but in actuality, they inspired somebody to be special. And oh my gosh, it's still not scratching the surface of this show. I think what makes this series great, let's start off with the visuals. Yes, this show looks fantastic. Not a big shock. This is Dogokobo. Dogokobo is this up and coming studio. Not really up and coming. It's been, it's been up and <laughs> it's been up for a while now. It's a studio that literally is setting itself aside from so many of the, of the big studios out there. Dogokobo has been knocking out of the park for a long time now. They had one slip up back there a, little, a while back, a childhood friend show that, that oops happened back there. But no, it, it's an incredible studio, and this is an original project. And typically, I love supporting original projects because we don't know the source material. We can't have somebody hype things up. We're going into it completely blind. But unfortunately, with a lot of originals, they don't work out in the end. And this is the one that I think so far, I can argue the second episode had a little bit of a dip. It definitely was not the hype of the first episode. The first episode is, it's a movie. It is that gorgeous, and it's so great in that regard. I loved the first episode. Second episode, I think it really lays in how you feel about Kim, because Kim is a bit much. <laughs> she is a hyper fan, but I think she was still cute. Like she, they, they still kind of pulled off that cuteness about her, that flusteredness that kind of offsets a little bit. But yeah, as an original project from Dogokobo, they are still pumping in some great visuals and style that just absolutely pops. One, yes, the contrast, the colors are just great. But additionally, they're nailing the nightlife. And a lot of these scenes are, are pretty much in the scene of the night city. And they just nail that lighting and everything. It kind of reminds me a lot of Call of the Night. Call of the Night just nailed that nightlife. And this one is really hitting on it. But additionally, kind of not relying on a lot of like very standard shots. There's a lot of perspective shots and there's a lot of panning shots. There's a couple points where it doesn't nail it. Like you'll have this one shot where the character was singing uh, in front of the wall and the camera got really crazy that was kind of panning around them. And the character themselves, which was in 2D, kind of jumped a little bit. But other than that, like most of the panning shots, the characters with the camera kind of, the perspective shifting for them, I'm saying camera, but we all know it's not a camera. <laughs> the perspective itself is shifting and it just works so well. And they do this often as sort of a, very casually throwing it in there. But when you think about what they're doing there, it just works out so well. Like they have this one scene where Mahiru is laying on her bed and then she goes to get up and the camera pans up with her. It's like, it's one of those things where it's like, you don't really ever see that. <laughs> they usually just leave the perspective where it is, especially when characters are moving. But this show is just, it doesn't care. It, it's taking all these perspective shots and it's just nailing them. Except for, like I said, that one moment where it felt like the character was kind of jumping around a little bit too much. The character expressions are fantastic. Uh, the exchanges themselves are just kind of enhanced by the fact that the camera angles kind of shift to show sort of what the character's looking at. A, a good example is the first moment that Kano takes down her mask and you have that moment that Mahiru notices that she looks like Cleopatra. <laughs> like immediately her vision just kind of zooms in on her face. It's those kind of perspectives that really give you a sense of the character's intimacy. Like how close they are to each other, what they're really focusing on. Every one of those shots are just absolutely fantastic. Putting aside the visuals, I'm going to sit here and gush forever and ever on the visuals, but I think what makes this show so great, because visuals alone aren't going to carry a show. I mean, there's a few shows out there that visuals alone can work with, but with Jellyfish Can't Swim at Night, like I mentioned earlier, what makes this show so great is, yes, it's a, lo it's a lot of discussion about your future, your goals, what your desires are, the haves and haves nots, the idea that because you didn't succeed here, you're never going to succeed. And this person succeeding, and that's because they're special. It's something that even me personally, I mean, everybody at some point probably has felt this. I me mean, right now, I feel it. Like whenever I see that somebody else is doing better on YouTube, I'm going to think immediately, my gosh, I wish I was like that. But it's, it's a very difficult place to be in because yes, there is a side of it that almost makes you want to get better, but there is the, the worst side of it that makes you give up. 
And I think, again, Mahiro is a good example of somebody giving up. They felt like they didn't achieve. And I think that's a great message to have when showing that somebody else can lift you. It goes to the theme and the title of the show itself. When it first opens up, it's talking about a jellyfish. The concept of the jellyfish in this series is that it's really hitting heavy on the idea that a jellyfish itself cannot swim at night. It needs to have some sort of light. And because it can't swim at night, it pulls in the light around them so that it can see and that it can move on its own. And the idea here is that Mahiro believed that she was a jellyfish that was not lit up. She couldn't see anything. She had no desires. She couldn't be a bright, special someone. But it is when Kano finally grabs her hand that she goes, oh, hey, I can finally swim at night. If I'm with you, I will pull in your light. It will light me up so that I can stand on my own. That's what they're kind of pushing here is the idea of people sort of supporting each other, which is what I got a sense of when I seen the PVs and the synopsis. I get this indication that this is going to be a story about people coming together, supporting each other and finding themselves. Yes, at the same time, the social anxieties and the idea of social media and all that kind of stuff that sort of <laughs> affects them. They want to go viral. They want to be successful. And I'll be curious if, if with how it's played out so far, I'm curious of how well it'll play out the idea of, again, continuously failing. Because when it comes to viral, when it comes to becoming a social media star, whatever, like it hints at the very beginning, you think that you're going to get something, but you're a dime a dozen. When you have that presence of so many people kind of fighting for that same attention, will you even get that attention? But so far, it's got a good setup. It's, it's playing that all really well, and it's presented so great. And just on top of that, the character exchanges. This show nails character exchanges. The chemistry between the characters, the conversations, all that stuff feels very natural. Yes, Kano is a little bit up there. <laughs> Definitely got that Ria Takahashi in there, by the way. Ria Takahashi just absolutely nailing that character. Ria Takahashi's definitely taken over that character, but she's a past idol. So she's used to that. She's used to being bombastic and loud and grabbing people's attention. But other than that, because of what she is, everyone of these characters sort of interact very casually in a way that I feel is very natural. Like even the very first conversation between Mahiru and her sister. It's like a very casual conversation about being viral and looking pretty and, yes, what society expects of you and do you play into that? And, yes, being a deadbeat, not really succeeding, even though you think you can and what kind of repercussions come from that. It's a very casual conversation between siblings to kind of talk about futures and mistakes that you can make. I could go on and on and on talking about this show. I think just everything about this show is perfect. It works perfect. It's visually perfect. It's got characters that are perfect. It's got the character exchange that are perfect. And it's got a topic that, again, so there's a few anime out there and stories that try to nail on, but it's doing it in a way that's not trying too hard to lean into it, but at the same time having that same result in place. The idea of expectations, futures, what your goals are, being special, the haves and haves not, and yes, the idea of wanting to be successful on social media, which is a very difficult thing. And yes, technically, doing what you love. Who cares what other people think? I think mean, Kano hits that so well. Who cares what they think? Do it because you like it. Well, I'm not special like you. I can't do it like you. Oh, so you're ordinary. All right, I, d I got you wrong, walking away. That stuff is just so well played out. Anyways, I'm gonna go into it again. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this first impressions of Jellyfish Can't Swim at Night. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure that like button down below, comment. Let me know what you think of the series. If you're gonna be checking it out, additionally, if you're new to the channel, make sure that subscribe button to get my content. I do news reviews, first impressions, top list if it's anime, it's pretty much here. Additionally, if you like this content and you want to support the channel more, I have a Patreon link, tips, links, or thanks, membership button down below. Greatly appreciate it, it does. And y'all take care.